Nehemiah chapter 13. On that day, they read in the book of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the audience of the people, by the, by the reading of the Bible in Nehemiah, that the Amorite and, and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. And that is written. But it, it said Moabite, it didn't say Moab, Moabite Jess, allowing Ruth to come in. This is why, because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water. When Israel come through to the promised land, they was <coughs> they would stop and say, listen, we'll buy our money, we'll buy the water with we'll, anything we'll pay for. And they came out with soldiers against Israel. God said, I will bless them that bless, bless you. I will curse them that curse you. They gave Israel no help. They get no help. They get no satisfaction from God. And we're going, again, I said the Old Testament, you're going to see it played out. And at the end of the tribulation period, when Jesus separates the sheep from the goats, those that helped Israel get the promise. Those that don't help Israel go up into hell. Everything rests not upon America. Everything rests upon what you do with the Jewish people. Even the church age today. What's wrong with the major things in the KKK? They're against the Jewish people and anybody. Neo-Nazism and all that. They're against the Jew. I don't care anybody else. If they're against the Jew, God says, I will curse them. Moabites and the Amorites, those are the children of Lot, are and have been cursed because they did not help Israel. But hired Balaam, that'd be Numbers 22 to 20, chapter 22 to 24, against them, that he should curse them. Oh, I will curse them that curse you. There you go. How be it our God, our God, Israel's God, turned the curse into a blessing. The enemies of Israel did not get what they wanted. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. A division. They stayed amongst the Hebrews. All the, all the heathen, all the Gentiles, get away from us. And any Moabites and Amorites by, the, by what is read, you guys are not allowed here. And we saw the name of Moabite amongst the list of names. And before this, Elisha, the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the house of our God, has a chamber in the temple, was allied. That's the only time that word shows up. And this word is also used with Solomon. It's connected by marriage, a treaty. Solomon had the same thing with Pharaoh's daughter. On to Tobiah. That's the enemy. Chapter 2, verses 10, 19. This priest has married into the enemy. And we're going to see about that in a moment. And he, Elisha, had prepared for him a great chamber in the house of the Lord. This, he prepared his own place. He thought of himself. And these would be pictures today in the ministry, men who are fat catty, who got living off in, at the sheep, flaying the sheep so they can eat. Nothing new under the sun. Where a four time, that's the first time that word shows up, they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense, and the vessels, and the tithe of corn, the new wine, fresh wine, and the oil. All right, so this chamber that Elisha had is a chamber for the children of the Levites, the children of the porters, the children of the singers, where Israel brought their offerings in and it was supposed to go in this room. Well, it's going for Elisha. 
and we're going to see the troubles in a moment. Which was commanded to be given to the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the offerings of the priests. When the children of Israel was supposed to bring, it was supposed to be laid up in store, and this guy is using the space for his own living. And there are people who will give to a church, simply whatever it may be called. And the person out of the pulpit, male or female, may be fat catting off the ministry where it should be going to somewhere else. And you better watch out because churches say, oh, we have a mission. You better make sure they have a mission board. You better make sure where that money they say is going is going to where it's supposed to be going. I'm not saying all churches. I'm not saying all assemblies. But there are liars and deceivers out there. Here's a room that the children of Israel thought, hey, I'm bringing my new wine. I'm bringing my raisins. I'm bringing my grapes. I'm bringing the corn. And it's going to be stored for the priest, and it's not. But in all this, all this time, was not I in Jerusalem, Nehemiah. For in the two and thirty year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. So Nehemiah leaves Jerusalem, heads back to Babylon. And he, he remember in the beginning of Nehemiah, the king says, well, how long are you going to be gone? And he gave him a set time. At that set time, Nehemiah comes back and says, hey, sir, I'm back. This is what happened. Gives a full report. And then he comes back. He gets leave again. So while Nehemiah is gone, there's utter chaos going on. While Nehemiah is gone, Elisha sets up his own little home takes over the ministry and I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Elisha did for Tobiah oh oh not only is he did it for himself but he did it for the enemy he has put a stronghold in the temple of the enemies of God in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God and it grieved me sore. Therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah. Elijah had prepared this, this, this chamber and he filled it with Tobiah's junk. Nehemiah grabs that junk out of the chamber. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers, and tithes brought I again the vessels of the house of God with the meat offerings and the frankincense. Hey, get this junk out of here. Bring it down to the, to the dump, wherever. I don't care. Get it out of here. Priest, Levites, come here. Clean this area up. Sir, we're done cleaning. All right, now put the, put the corn back in there. Put the frankincense back in there. Frankincense was used as, as the incense. The frankincense was used to sprinkle on the bread. The show bread. Frankincense was one of the gifts brought to Jesus. And I perceive that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. They're not being paid. For the Levites and the singers, again, that did the work, were fled everyone to his field. The work of the temple of God was happening. They haven't got paid. So the Levites, the porters, and the singers got to go get a job. They got to make a living. And there are many churches, assemblies, whatever you want to call it out there. A man is dedicated to the Lord. He wants to do right. His job is to minister to the saints, and he can't do it fully because he's got to get a job because his congregation won't pay him. Now, you may have somebody in the pulpit, a pastor, whatever you call it, he might be fat-catting, living off the church. 
On the other side of the scale, you may have a guy who loves the ministry, loves the Lord, wants to do right, and you're starving to death. And the, 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 the assembly, the people are being starved because he can't study the word as he's supposed to because he's got to get a job. And if he's called of God, he's supposed to be ministering to the people. I know, I know preachers of both avenues. They fleece the sheep and then the sheep fleece the pastor. That ain't right. Then contended. Urge in an argument. That's the first time that word shows up. You know where else that word shows up? It shows up many places in the Bible. You know that word content that word shows up in the book of Acts? When Peter goes to a Gentile's house to have Italian sausage and spaghetti. After the Holy Spirit has gotten the whole entire family and friends saved, they contended with Peter, why did you go to that Gentile's house? That's arguing with words. I contended with the rulers and said, why is the house of God forsaken? Have you not ever heard that out of the modern church? People don't go to church. Why is the house of the Lord forsaken? Okay, I know you're spiritualizing it, but let's put it doctrinal. It's in the Old Testament. You're talking about the temple. You're talking about priests. You're talking about singers. And you're talking about porters. And you can spiritualize it. That's allowed. But doctrinally, it is set to the temple. And, oh, we don't have priests in our church. But the statement is about the priests of God. And a lot of times, you know, why have you forsaken the house of God? It, it's not, it, the context is you have not come to church. Why? Your church the temple? I don't think so. A Christian cannot forsake the, the, the house of God because he is the house of God. He's got the foundation of Jesus Christ. And Paul said, we are the vessels. Paul said, we're the building material. I thought you'd like to know that. And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Been out of place since Nehemiah had gone. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn, new wine, and the oil unto the treasury. Evidently, they haven't been bringing it. Why should we bring our offerings? It's been misused by Tobiah. It's not been put where it's supposed to be. The priests are not getting their salary. Keep it for ourselves. And I made treasurers over the treasuries. There's your treasury department you find right there. Shemaiah the priest, Zadok the scribe, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Levites, Pedadiah, and next unto them, Hananiah the son of Zechariah, the son of Mataniah, for they were counted faithful. And their office was to distribute unto the brethren. In the New Testament, you write down that would be your deacons. And you find the qualifications of those deacons in Acts chapter 6. Men faithful. Men who fold the Holy Ghost. Men who have studied the Word. Men who, and you've got again, and whatever you want to call church assemblies, whatever you got, you got men in position of a church position in the Bible, deacons. And they don't deserve that office. But they're given that office because of prestige or where their standings are of the church or how great thou art. God be faithful. Both New and Old Testament. Remember me. By the way, distribute to the brethren. That was the problem with the book of Acts too. With the widows. That's why they called the deacon. The widows were being neglected. They said, why should we serve the tables of the Lord? We need somebody to distribute the needs to the saints. Deacons are supposed to help the church people. And faithful to that. Remember me, oh my God. That's Nehemiah. This is a side note. Remember me, oh my God. Concerning this. And why not? Not out my good deeds. We can't say that, Christian. Wipe out, wipe, uh, wipe not out my good deeds, 
that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. That's a new that's an old testament thing. Lord God, look how great I've done. Look at me, Lord God. That's old testament. Look what I've done for the house of God. That's old testament. And again, you got people in the ministry. Like, look how good I've done for the church. Look how good I've done for other people. Look how great I am. And the Bible says, hey, there's none that do it good. No, not one. None are righteous. In, the, in those days saw I in Judah some treading wine, you know, pressing the grave, presses on the Sabbath. Uh-oh, that's a violation of the law. That is one of the big ten. For the Jewish people, there is no Sabbath to the Christian. The Jewish person, that's one of the reasons why they were taken out of Judah and brought to Babylon. They did not give the land rest. There's a Sabbath of weeks. There's a Sabbath of years. And Nehemiah is looking around and it's Sabbath and they are doing work. A violation of the law. And bringing in sheaves, that's you know, they're going out picking crops and they got the sheep underneath their arm. And lading, that's the first time that word shows up. And the only other place it shows up is Acts 27, 10. Lading. They're lading asses. They are loading their pickup trucks. Now, let me ask you something. We're not under the Sabbath, okay? Christians are not under the Sabbath. We are not under the law. But if you got a church, organization, denomination, that you are the seventh day Adventist, and you honor the Sabbath day, and Sunday is the day of the Antichrist, and you load your pickup truck on your church day, your Sabbath, you have broken the law. There it is. An ass would be relevant to a pickup truck today. Did you take Kool-Aid, put it in a, in a jug, and, and stir it? That's like making wine. You violated the scriptures. If you want to be under that covenant, you want to be under the Old Testament law. And they got rules and regulations around it. I've dealt with some of them. You can't make Kool-Aid on the Sabbath if you want to be under the law. You can't put things in your pickup truck. Under the law. Also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens. You carry things around in your house if you're a seven-day Adventist? How about a seven-day Adventist hospital working on a Saturday? I used to aggravate them all the time when I was in their hospital. You can't serve me my food. Why? You're a Sabbath keeper. You're not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath. Well, we had, okay, now bring me a pork sandwich. Well, we can't have pork. Why not? Because that's a violation of the dietary law of the Bible, dietary law of the Old Testament. Now, God said, hey, if I can give thanks for it, I can eat it. You see, they nick pick and nick choose. You couldn't be a seven day Adventist today, living around, because you'd be all dead by the capital punishment of violating the law. And they brought unto Jerusalem on the Sabbath day and testified against them in a day wherein they sold victuals. Do you go to the store on your Sabbath day? Do you go to a restaurant on your Sabbath day? You're buying something. That is against the law. I'm glad I'm under grace. I like getting a, 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 I like getting a slushy and all that. I was under law, I couldn't get a slushy. I thank the Lord for a slushy. There, there dwelt men of Tyre, that's, under, that's in the Mediterranean Sea coast, also therein which brought fish. Not the wrong fish. But you can't buy it and sell it on the Sabbath. All manner of wear. You know what that is? That's hardware, that's software. I don't know if they had Tupperware, but that's that kind of stuff. Shoes. Huh? Shoes, clothes, yeah, they had a mobile Walmart. That's what it is. I don't know if I can say Walmart, but. And sold on the Sabbath. Now, I don't know. I've never been to those churches, but do those churches 
Seventh-day Adventists and those who follow the law, do they sell things in their church like the Baptists do? If they do, it's a violation of the law. Do they have coffee shops in there? It's a violation. Unto the children of Judah. A children of Judah. Children of Jerusalem. See, the Sabbath is for Jews. It's a sign to the Jews. No Christians. Christ has not died and buried and rose again. He hasn't even been born yet. Then I contended. <laughs> you ever know a contender? He's fighting with them. Nehemiah takes arms and takes aggravation. Conflict. He contends with them. Why did God say he's given us armor if he didn't want us to fight? Then I contended with the nobles of Judah, the, the upright, the ones who knew better, and said unto them, what evil thing is it? What evil? It's evil. That you do and profane the Sabbath day. Did not your father, here comes history. Did not your fathers, Israel, Jewish, thus and did not our God bring all this evil Babylon upon us and upon this city, destruction? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. You know what you might just said? God's going to do it all over again. Nehemiah is like, I don't want this to happen again. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark, before the Sabbath, just before 6 p.m., starting to get dusk, I commanded the gate should be shut. So when you go around the place and say, this park closes at dusk. Not sunset, at dusk. Where do you get that? You get that from Nehemiah chapter 13. As the lights are going down. Didn't know that, did you? And charge that they be that not be open till after the Sabbath, and some of my servants set I at the gates, that there should be no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants, the people that sold things, and the sellers of all kind of where anything and everything lodged without Jerusalem once or twice outside the city gates they got their tent set up and they're sleeping there it's before the Black Friday rush and you got your little tent set there it is in the Bible come on <laughs> why do people do it it's in the Bible then I testified against them <laughs> and said unto them why lodge ye about the wall? If you do it so again, I will lay in on you. From that time forth came they no more on the set. How, how fierce was Jeremiah? Okay, we're not coming back. We'll be back during the rest of the week. That's how fierce he was. Well, then, okay, guys, you'll come back here again, you know. You're going to get in trouble. I'm gonna count to ten. When you come back, yep. I'll give you a fistful. Men were men back then. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves, unpure, unclean, that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, oh my God, concerning this also. And spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. He's just having a time here. He's battling Hebrews and he's battling the Gentiles. In those days also I saw I, Jews, that had married wives of Ashdod, that's Philistine, of Ammon and Moab, mixed marriage. Now let me tell you something according to the law. That was absolutely forbidden by law. Jewish people were to, if you're a Judah, you marry a woman from Judah. If you're a woman of Dan, you found a husband of Dan. 
Gad did not find somebody from Jerusalem, uh, from uh, Joseph. You didn't even cross the, the tribes of Israel in marriage for the Jewish people. And it was absolutely in the law, they were not to marry the people outside of Jewish people. There's a double law here for the Jewish people. No one that's not Jewish and no one that's not outside of your tribe. Other than that, it's a violation of the law. We're not under law. Now, for the Christian, we have no Christian. We're under grace. Ought not to marry anybody who's not a Christian. 1 Corinthians 7. You want the troubles? You want the problems? Go ahead. Marry a guy who, or a woman that is not saved. Better marry someone that's saved. And you better prove they're saved. And their children spank half the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, Hebrew, but according to the language of each people. So they're losing the language of the Hebrews. That's exactly what Babylon tried to do with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo in Daniel chapter 1. Try to get rid of that Jewish language. You know what we call that today in America? We call it Press 1 for England. We're trying to set forth a language. We're messing with the language. How we're making people who don't even live in this country, we are going to their standards and they're not going to our standards. That's exactly what's happening here in Babylon. And it's happening today among the Jewish children probably know more about English from the English public schools than they know about Hebrew. Now I know they got to know enough Hebrew to do the bar mitzvah, but how much other Hebrew do they know? They get more English than they do Hebrew during the week. And Nehemiah says, that's wrong. And I contended with them. Oh boy, he's a contender. He's angry. And I cursed them. Oh, Nehemiah, you bad boy, you. In the name of Jehovah... That's not curse as, as four letter words. That, I, I curse you for what you're doing. There it is. And smoke certain of them. He's punching them, hitting them. You imagine seeing a preacher doing that today? They arrest him. He would make the front page of every newspaper. Preacher cusses out his congregation for sinning and kicks and punches people who are sinning against God in the Bible. Yet Cartwright would knock them off their horse and punch them their, dead, their, their, their daylights out until they receive Christ. Plucked off their hair. <laughs> That's not nice, Nehemiah. Can you see Nehemiah in today's churches? No. I can't see John the Baptist in today's I can, You know what? Jesus is not in the church today. Bible says Revelation, he stands outside knocking. You imagine a guy come up and I, I've, I've had my beard pulled by accident. It hurts. And I got angry. And it was an innocence. And made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your, your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. Knock it off. Did not, okay, here comes history. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these? Yes, he did. Yet among many nations was there no king like him, true, who was beloved of his God, true, and God made him king over all Israel, true. Nevertheless, even in him did outlandish, that's the only time that word shows up, outlandish women, Cause to sin. He turned his heart away from many gods because he had many wives. It 
the children of the Hebrews are losing their Hebrew heritage again. And when you marry someone who's not saved, you're going to lose your heritage of being a Christian. It never gets better. You think it's getting better, you're believing the lie of evolution. It's always the lowest common denominator. Outlandish women caused to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do this great evil to transgress against our God in marrying that's the first time that word shows up marrying strange wives and there's only one other place that marrying shows up Matthew 24 38 Matthew 24 38 that's two places in the Bible marrying and one of the sons of Jehoiada Je 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 the son of Elisha, the high priest, so he's of the priest, was son-in-law to Sam Ballot. That's another enemy. The Horai, therefore I chased him from me. Yeah, I mean, he's, Nehemiah, he's pulling their hair out, he's punching them, he's hitting them, and he's chasing them away. Nehemiah is not calling an altar call. Get out of here in your sin. Twenty nine. Remember them, oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Thus cleanse I them from before strangers, and pointed the wards that's rooms of the priests and the Levites, every one to his business. And for the wood offering at the times appointed, and for the first fruits, the offering. Remember me, oh my God, for good. He's having a hard time. 